In this episode, I will teach you how to implement email authentication using React Native and Firebase. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Now open up Firebase and create a new project. Name it Email Sign In React Native. And once you click continue, turn off the Google Analytics. Once the project is open, add the web app. Because React Native uses a JavaScript runtime and uses the Node.js packages, we'll have to initialize a web app. Once you're in the Add Firebase SDK step, don't click away. Just continue to your VS Code Editor. Once you have your VS Code Editor, open up the terminal and go cd. Dot dot. This opens up the parent folder for the project. Once you're in the parent folder, type in npx create expo app email sign in React. Make sure to give it the dash T flag for TypeScript. Now just add expo template blank TypeScript. Once the project has been created and all the packages have been installed, run cd email sign in react native. Once you have the project open, run npx expo customize metro.config.js. Once the metro.config.js file has been created, Run npm install at expo slash vector icons and firebase. Once everything has been installed and initialized, close the terminal. Now create a folder called firebase and inside of that folder create a file called index.ts. Once you have created the file, go back to firebase, copy the configuration and paste it into the file. Edit the app variable and make sure you export it and rename it to Firebase app. Now go back to the Firebase console, continue to console, and in the build tab, click on authentication. Once you're in the authentication page, press get started. Once you're in the authentication page, click on email password and enable email password. Just save, and you should see that email password is an enabled provider for your authentication. Now go back to VS Code, and close the index.ts file. Now create a new folder called utils and inside of that folder, create a file called email.ts. This file will be used to validate emails for the email input. Once the file has been created, go over to GitHub. You can find the repository link in the description. Once you have the GitHub open, go into utils and open the email.ts file. The reason we're pasting the code is because typing in all of that regex would be too much. And regex is beyond the scope of this video. All you need to do is that it validates the email to make sure all the characters are correct. Now create a new folder called state. Inside of that folder, create a new file called authroute.ts. Firstly, import create context from React. Now create a new union type called authroute. Now create a new context called authroute state context. Now give it a generic type and make sure it has a route parameter, a closed modal parameter, and a set route function. Now give it a default value. Once you have finished, close the file. Inside of the Firebase folder, create a new file called auth.ts. Now initialize the authentication using the getAuth method from Firebase. Now create a new function called login with email. Create a new try catch block inside and await the sign in with email and password function from Firebase off. Create a new function called sign up with email. Then await the create user with email password function from Firebase. Make sure to catch any errors and create a new function called sign out async. Then make sure to use the sign out method from Firebase authentication. Now create a new folder called components and inside of that folder create a file called app button.tsx. Now create a new interface called app button props. This will contain all the properties needed for the app button. Now create the function called app button. Now deconstruct the property so it's easier to access. Now use the use state hook to create a state property called pressed. Once that's done, open the repository in GitHub. Open up the components folder and open the app button.tsx file. Scroll down and copy the styles and paste it into the bottom. Although the styles is a big part of the application, I won't cover it in this video. Once you have pasted in the styles and imported the style sheet interface, go to the app button component and create a pressed button style property. 
This will determine the style of the button whether it is pressed or not. And it will also change the color of the button if it's not primary. Now create a new property called button style. Create a button text style property and create a button width style property. Now create a view component and add a button wrapper style too. Now create a pressable. The reason we use pressable and not button is because the button doesn't let us configure it with the styles. Inside the pressable add a text with the style of button text style. In the components folder, create a new file called allflowview.tsx. Now create a function called allflowview and access the auth route state context using the use context hook from React. Now create a computed property called current view. I use the use memo hook because I only want to update it once a dependency variable has updated. Now create the login view and the sign up view. Now in the markup, add a safe area view. This view adds the sufficient padding so the notch and the edges don't go over the content on iOS. Now open up the AuthFlow view in GitHub and copy the styles and paste it into the file. Now add the auth container style to the safe area view. Below the current view, add a view that will contain all the buttons for the route. Now in the components folder, create a new file called iconbutton.tsx. Use the ionicons.getRawGlyphMac function to get all the possible icons that ionicons have. Now create an interface called iconbuttonProps. Now create a component called icon button and give it the properties of icon button props. Now create a stateful property called pressed. Once that's done, open up the icon button.tsx file in the GitHub. Copy the styles and just paste it into the file in VS Code. Make sure to import the style sheet interface from React Native. Now add a press button style and a button icon style property. These will determine the style of the button. Now in the markdown, add a pressable. We add a pressable because we want to customize the button. I will just add the ion icon inside of the pressable. Once you're done with the icon button.tsx file, go into the components, create a new file called authprovider.tsx. Now create a new context called auth context, then add an interface called auth provider props. Now create the component auth provider. Now create a stateful property called user state. We will use the use effect hook to call the on auth state change only once. Now create the provider for the auth context and give it the value of user state and input the children. Now go back to the auth flow view and inside the button bar add an icon button. Now let's go into the login view. In the login view, we will use the use state hook a lot because we need to have a lot of reactive values because we want to use the form. Now copy down the email value and set one as the password value and the other one as loading. For form error handling, add an error value and a show error value. Now access the auth route state using the use context hook and create a computated form valid variable. Now in the use memo hook for the form valid, we will validate the email, password, and check if the form is loading. I'll create an asynchronous function called handle submit, set loading to true, and then await the login with email function that we created earlier. Now do some basic error handling. After you finish the handle submit function, create a function called handle set email. Now create a function called handle set password. And finally add a function called handle redirect. Now add the generic markdown. Create an input section and inside of that create a text input of keyboard type email address. 
set the events and value to make sure when you click on the text input, it changes the email. After you've created the email input section, copy down the input section and make sure this input section is going to be the one for the password. Now on the bottom, create a submit button container. Let's show the error if the show error variable is true. Now let's make sure to fix the naming error in the all throughout state context. And let's make sure to fix the naming error with the login with email method. Once all the naming errors have been fixed, we can copy the code from the login view to the sign up view and we can make some little edits. First of all, let's change the login with email method to the sign up with email method. Next, let's change the handle redirect function from redirecting to the sign up page to the login page. Let's change the title. Let's also change the main button. And finally, we could change the don't have an account prompt to the have an account prompt. Once the authflow.tsx file has been complete, close the file and open a new folder called screens. Inside of the screens folder, create a new file called app.tsx. Once the file has been created, create a new component called app screen. Access the user data using the use context hook and provide a button that'll be the sign out button. Now let's fix a property error with the app button props. And let's fix a style error. Once you have finished with the markdown, open the app.tsx file in the GitHub. Copy the styles and just paste it into the VS Code editor. Make sure to import the style sheet interface. Now let's just add the styles for the components. Once you have finished with the app.tsx file, create a new file in the screens folder called auth.tsx. Once the file has been created, create a component called AuthScreen. This will take care of providing all of the state for the authentication flow view. This will also manage the state to show the authentication pages. Once you have finished creating the methods, copy the styles from the GitHub.
I'll just create simple markdown. All the markdown is is just a few text on the top and some buttons to open up the authentication pages on the bottom. We will contain the authentication views in a modal. This is simply just a dismissible screen that we could either have as a sheet, as a popover, or as a full screen dialog. The reason I chose to contain the alt views in a modal is because it is easier to deal with in a modal that you could dismiss at any time than actually replacing the content with the authentication logic. Once you have finished with the auth.tsx page, open the app.tsx page in the root. Remove all the default code that Expo has provided with us and create a new component called app container. This will be a wrapper to our app containing the user state. The reason we wrap our app in an auth provider is because we want the full application to update when the user has updated. Once you have finished with the app.tsx file, open the terminal. Make sure you have your iOS simulator open and if you have an Android simulator open then you would have to run npm run Android. Because I have an iOS simulator running on my machine already, I just have to run npm run iOS. But make sure your emulator has been started before you run the run command. Make sure to fix the bug with the button on the auth.tsx file. And once that has been complete, the application has now been fully completed. As you can see, we can navigate from the sign in page to the login page. We could also navigate back to the original page because I don't have any emails authenticated with this current Firebase project. I'll just sign up with a new one. You could add some dummy data and once it has been validated, click sign up. It should take you to the you're signed in as screen. Now just click sign out. And because we've already made an account, you could log in using that account. If you have any feedback, please let me know in the comment section. With that out of the way, thank you for watching, like and subscribe to the video.